You talked about the transition of working BT Sport WWE to working for WWE. And so let's go back to earlier this year, Montreal Elimination Chamber, to to break the fourth wall a little bit. Two weeks prior to the event, you and me are talking. And we're both and we're both like watching SmackDown. I'm obviously, you know, working the shift. We're we're both watching SmackDown and we're like, man, we gotta figure out a way to be there. Yeah. Right. And so I do my thing. I'm trying to like, hey, you know, can we get, you know, some, some budget? Can, can I get out there? I think it's a, it's a big deal. You're obviously, you know, working your magic. We both end up being there, but in completely different capacities. I'm there working for BT Sport. You're working there for WWE. Here's what I want to ask. Given what happened and given your involvement in the, in the event and everything, what did you think of the reaction from the pro <laughs> wrestling media especially because some of those are friends of yours. Let's be honest. Yeah. Some of them know you really, really well. You, you have history with a lot of these people going way back, ex-colleagues and what have, what have you. What was your thoughts on how they kind of reviewed and reacted to your participation there? Um, I, I, was, I was, to be honest, a little bit surprised and in some respects a little bit disappointed. I felt like they were projecting their own situations and values onto me. I have never claimed that I was a pro wrestling journalist. I have never wanted to be a pro wrestling journalist. I have never openly said that I wanted to be a pro wrestling journalist. And just because I interview pro wrestlers, and I do think that I am practicing journalism when I'm interviewing them, I, I, I'm not a day-to-day guy. I'm not a beat guy. I am not reviewing SmackDown and Raw and Dynamite and all this stuff. Um, I don't really even hardly watch them on a week to week basis. You know, I follow the accounts, I check some stuff out on YouTube and all that stuff. I'm not doing, you know, shows, I'm not hosting shows, I'm not doing podcasts, none of that. And so, you know, I think that they were almost confusing A, their situations to mine, B, me as the MMA guy and me in the wrestling world um and 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 making this into a much uh bigger deal than it was and 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 referencing like oh you've tweeted out things like man i could count on one hand the amount of times that i've tweeted something out and that's just me like you know asking someone in pr that's hardly journalism okay and 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 the saudi thing that i refuted it had already been refuted by the time i tweeted and i was just curious like oh are you guys being sold by saudi no cool i'm going to tweet that awesome thank you that's not that's not really journalism, you know what I mean? Um, and I don't think that doing that should have any type of negative impact or reflection on me, the MMA guy, me, the boxing guy, me, the this guy, the that guy. Um, and, and to me, why I did that, if you're wondering, is twofold. Number one, I had been talking to them about doing some like one-off stuff here and there. And when they approached me about doing the uh, Extreme Rule, Rules VO, uh, that was the you know the DC appearance with Riddle and um, and Rollins. Um, I, I did it, and I was like, I'm not getting paid. You know, I don't I don't want. I was just so, and it wasn't because wrestling journalism, this and that. I just had this rule in my mind, like you cannot get paid by any promotion, right? Like you cannot because of what happened with the UFC and Fox. Even even when I did, um, just to, to tell you like where my mind was when I did the Jake Paul stuff. And initially, like 100%, you know, it was through a recommendation by MVP. I was like, I'm not doing any of this if, if MVP is paying. I cannot do it. MVP did not pay me. It was showtime. When I did the face-to-face for Serrano and Taylor, I was like, I, I don't have any relationship with DAZN, but I need to be paid by DAZN. So it doesn't matter what. So I had the same mindset. Then the thing aired. I did it. I didn't get paid thing aired. And and they even told me like, you're crazy. Why aren't you getting paid for it? But like, I just wanted to keep it very clean thing aired. I was like, man, the feeling that I had seeing my name and hearing my voice on WWE, it was like the little kid in me came out. I was like, this is so much fun. And it kind of opened my brain and idea to like, what if I did do this? Life is so short. Why don't I just go out and scratch this itch and see if it's, it's, it's fun. If it's something, you know, completely different than what I do. So I said to myself, if an opportunity came about, uh, the next time around, I would consider it. And then they reached out about Montreal. And I was like, you know what? I'm going to do this. It's my hometown. It's Sami Zayn. It's the arena that I went to a million times. Like, I would be an idiot. I, d- I could die tomorrow. And I'm going to turn down for what? Because of some dudes in, in wrestling media who are going to think, I-, I couldn't give a. Like, if you, if, if, you, if you think less of me now, 
God bless. If you aren't a fan of me now, God bless. If you don't want to watch my MMA or boxing or real sports or anything else because I appeared on SmackDown and Elimination Chamber and I got paid by WWE, God bless. It's fine. I don't care anymore. I really don't. Um, I am who I am and I'm just going to do my thing and I'm going to do things that are going to make me happy. Um, you don't call me, like the people are like, you're not a real journalist. Because I'm a real Ariel Hawani. That's mm-hmm. who I am. All right. Um, and, and that's good enough for me. All right. So I'm not going to, I'm not going to take advice from people who I would never ask advice from. And um, yeah, that's it. You know, uh, I have, I, I, I don't take it personally. Like anyone who criticized me, I, I don't want to say F you and, you know, I'm not going to be your friend anymore. I'm not going to say hi to you. Uh, I just wouldn't have gone about it the same exact way, but everyone has their own, you know, path. Everyone has their own, um, you know, decisions that they have to make. And, you know, I, I would say to you here, like if they came back, I would be open to doing more. I had so much fun. It was amazing. 